guys, welcome back to the channel, Nate's Pink Bookshelf. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and the first thing I want to say is Happy New Year. Merry belated Christmas to you all. It is New Year, literally like January 1st, 2020. It's insane. I'm like excited for the new year. Um, but we're gonna dive into my January TBR for this video. So Previously in a video, I talked about my January TBR jar picks in which I had my son pick out some books from my little jars. I have four. I have this one, this one, one here, and then I have one like way down there on the other shelf. But um, he picked out some books for me and I have a bit of different categories. So the first category was standalone and for that book, I have It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. The original book was Conversion by Katherine Howe, but... I decided to hold off on that one until October since it's more of a spooky type of read and I repicked the book for myself and it was this one. All that I remember is that this is contemporary romance. Um, it follows Lily. It just says sometimes the one who loves you is the one who hurts you the most. Lily hasn't always had it easy but that's never stopped her from working hard for the life she wants. She's come a long way from the small town in Maine where she grew up. She graduated from college, moved to Boston, and started her own business. So when she fills a spark with a gorgeous neurosurgeon named Riley Kincaid, everything in Lily's life suddenly seems almost too good to be true. As questions about her new relationship overwhelm her, so do the thoughts of Atlas Corrigan, her first love, a link to the past she left behind. He was her kindred spirit, her protector. When Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily has built with Riley is threatened. So it sounds like it's going to be a love triangle. I'm really excited to dive into this and get a cute little fluffy romance out of this. So we have this as my standalone pick. Next were my book of the month book picks and I want to read at least minimum of two book of the month books a month. Um, if I go over there then that's perfectly fine because I have 38 books as of right now. Um, I haven't even seen the January picks for book of the month YA or book of the month. So yeah, normally I get about six books a month from book of the month, three from book of the month YA and three from book of the month. So yeah, the goal is to at least read two a month. Um, he picked out two, which I'm excited for the first one, and that's gonna be with the fire on high by Miss Elizabeth Acevedo. And what I remember is that this is YA contemporary, all about a young girl named Imani and her passion for cooking. She is a young mother. She's a senior in high school, and she takes care of her daughter and her ab abuela. So um, I'm excited to dive into this. I heard that this is really good, and that it just has a lot of great recipes. So I'm here for that. And I did do the edges of my book in orange because I thought that was cute. So yeah, we have this book here. Second book of the month book is going to be opposite of always by justin a reynolds and what i remember is that um this follows a kid what is his name i don't even remember this guy's name jack jack and kate and kate ends up dying but jack goes back in time to try to stop her from dying but in stopping her from dying he causes another relative or someone close to him to die and it's him having to come to the acceptance that kate has to die or something along those lines it's cute it's romance a little bit sci-fi sci with time travel so I've heard mixed reviews about this. I want to see where I fall on the spectrum. So we have this as my second book of the month pick. Then he picked out of my series continuation jar. The first book he picked was P.S. I Still Love You. Um, this is the sequel to, to All the Boys I've Loved Before. And I want to read this before the movie comes out on Netflix. And um, I don't know. I didn't really enjoy the first book. But I did love the movie. So I'm going to continue on just because Netflix is making the movie adaptations. And the movies are really good. So we're going to dive into this. So this book just picks up with Laura Jean and Peter after everything that went down in the first book. And I think another boy that one of the letters was sent to pops up in this. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I get the gist of. I'm not going to read the synopsis or anything like that because it's a sequel. So if you haven't read the first book, then go go check Goodreads. The link's down below. Okay, the second book he picked for a series continuation is one that I recently purchased, and that's Queen of Nothing, and I'm so stoked. So I did paint the edges of this one as well in gold, but um, Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Oh my god, I'm, I'm ready for this, like... I'm not ready for it, but I'm ready for it. And I did reread The Crew Prince and The Wicked King, um, as well as I think the novella is called The no Lost Sisters in December. So I'm so, so ready for this book. Can't wait to dive in. Might be the first one I pick up, honestly, just because I'm like really, really excited for this book. So yes, we have that. Okay, and then the next two books are going to be for my series starter jars. So my son picked out one and then I decided I wanted to add on an additional one just because I'm difficult like that. So the one my son picked is going to be Dreamer's Pool by Juliette Marillier. She is an author that I've been wanting to read for a long time. I do own her daughter of um, the forest, 
which is a part of think the, the air of the seven waters or something like that whatever that series is called i own that on ebook and i also have the fourth book in physical form somewhere on my shelf but he picked this one i'm actually excited to dive into this from her um the cover is stunning to me but all that i know is it follows black thorn and grim grim is an ex con or something like that he's a, a former prison mate yeah and i don't really know much about them but i've heard that it's enchanting it's dark it's funny so we're gonna go into this and then the second book that i picked for my series starters is blue screen by dan wells it's the first book in the mirador series this is dystopian sci-fi deals with virtual worlds that's all i know it sounds like it's gonna be good i want to read it because i've kind of flash read this years i don't even know how long ago it was when the third book came out whenever the third book came out i was sent the entire trilogy and i kind of flash read it and don't really remember much of what happened so i want to reread it and annotate and see how i feel um so that if i don't like it i can get rid of it but um yeah blue screen i love the cover she is gorgeous and then the last book i added on to my tbr jar was harry potter and the sorcerer's stone by jk rowling um so the thing is i read this before as you can see tabs i read it um, I picked this copy up from my local library. They were having their library sale, and I snagged up the first three books, I believe, as well as the play. Um, but, yeah, I snagged it up, decided to read it. I read it. Um, it was good, but I didn't care, honestly. I just, I, I didn't care. I did annotate somewhat a little bit, but I wasn't into it. I felt like I just had to read it just because everybody was talking about it, but I really do want to give it a try because I've seen all the movies love all the movies but i want to see what the hype is about the books so i'm deciding to reread this because i do have the sequel inside of my series continuation jar so i want to reread this book to prepare my mind and really annotate and get into this book i want to see what the hype is um so we have that on my, my list so that's that those were the picks for my tbr jar okay so moving forward we then have the other books that i want to read outside of my tbr jar so the first book i have is becoming by michelle obama i got this book when it came out i have been wanting to read this book when it since it came out i have the audiobook as well i just haven't had the chance to read it so i'm making sure that i get to it hopefully in january no later than if i don't read it in january i'll read it in february because i'm pretty sure there's going to be the blackathon or whatever that readathon is called that you read black authors so, if I don't get to it in January, definitely February, but I'm including it in my January TBR because I really want to start. I don't, I don't even care if I get through just five chapters or five pages. As long as I start this in January, I'm good because I also have the audiobook on my phone and I just, I really want to get into this. I I have to. It's a given. I have to. So, um, I'm debating if I want to color, I mean, do dyed sprayed edges on my book and do them in blue. I'm not sure yet, but um, we have this book here that I definitely want to get into reading. Okay, so the next few books are all review books that I have to read for review purposes. Um, so the first three I don't have physical copies of as of yet. They are still coming in the mail, but, you know, we ain't gonna worry about that. Um, so we just gonna throw covers up here. So the first one is going to be On Wings of Devotion. Cover is there. It's the second book in the Code Breakers series. I don't know if it's gonna be a series or a trilogy. Um, it's more of a companion series, so I don't need to read the first book, though I do own the first book, and I'm probably not gonna read the first book before I read it because that's how I do things. But um, it says, All of England thinks Philip Camden is a monster, a man who deliberately caused the deaths of his squadron. But as nurse Arabelle Dindler watches the so-dubbed Black Heart every day, she sees something far different, a hurting man desperate for mercy. And when their paths twist together, he declares himself her new protector. She realizes she has her own role to play in his healing. Philip Camden would have preferred to die that day with his squadron rather than be recruited by the Admiralty Code breaking division. I'm probably saying that word wrong, but whatever. The threats he receives daily are no great surprise, and in his opinion, well deserved. What comes as a shock is the reborn desire to truly live that Arabelle inspires in him. But when an old acquaintance shows up and seems set on using him in a plot that has the code breakers of room 40 in a frenzy, new affections are put to the test. So we have that. This is historical Christian fiction. Um, I don't know much about it. Like I said, I do own the first one, which I believe is called Numbers of Love. I think that's what it's called. Let me actually look it up. Um, the Number of Love is what it's called. Sorry. I do own the first book, so I may read the first book. I don't know, but this is a definite one that I have to read. So we'll see. I'm not really much of a historical fiction person, but when it comes to Christian historical fiction, I kind of enjoy it. So we have that as a book. The next book I have to read is Woven in Moonlight. This one is by Isabel 
Ibanan, Ibanez, I, the, the name is on the screen. I don't want to butcher it. But what I remember is that this has a little bit of magic in this romance. Um, So I'm going to read the synopsis because I don't remember off the top of my head. I don't have my physical copy yet. It says, a lush tapestry of magic, romance, and revolution drawing inspiration from Bolivian, 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 I think that's how you say that, politics and history. Zamina is a decoy condessa, a stand-in for the last remaining illustrian royal. Her people lost everything when the usurper attacked, using an ancient relic to summon ghosts and drive the illustrians from the La, La Ciudad. Now Zamina's motivated by her insatiable thirst for revenge and her real ability to spin thread from moonlight. When Atok demands the real Condessa's hand in marriage, it's Amina's duty to go in her steed. She relishes a chance as illustrian spies have reported that Atok's no longer carrying his deadly relic. If Zamina can find it, she can return the true aristocrat to their rightful place. She hunts for the relic, using her weaving ability to hide messages and tapestries for the resistance. But when a mass vigilante, a warm-hearted princess and a thoughtful healer challenge Zamina, her mission becomes more complicated. There could be a way to overthrow the usurper without starting another war, but only if Zamina turns her back on revenge and her condessa. So, it, it sounds like it's going to be a little bit difficult because I don't understand Spanish that well. I know a little bit of Spanish, so um, it's, it seems like it's going to be a bit of a difficult read for me, but it also sounds like it's going to be epic and fun and very much different of a style for me to read, so I'm super excited to dive into this and really get that atmosphere and that culture going um it sounds like it's gonna be good i love the cover it's really pretty so i'm excited to get into that and hopefully my physical copy comes before the end of the month so that i can read the physical copy instead of the ebook so yeah and hopefully there's some pronunciations for this book because i can't pronounce those names moving on we have malice by pentip dunn this Honestly, I can't remember what the genre is for this, but I'm going to read the synopsis. It says, what I know, a boy in my school will one day wipe out two-thirds of the population with the virus. What I don't know, who he is. In a race against the clock, I not only have to figure out his identity, but I have to outwit a voice from the future telling me to kill him. Because I'm starting to realize no one is telling the truth. But how can I play chess with someone who already knows the outcome of my every move? Someone so filled with malice, they've lost all hu hope in humanity. Well, I'll just have to find a way because now they're drawing a target on the only boy I've ever loved. Sounds like it's going to be epic. Seems to be like a little bit of a dystopian sci-fi feel. So, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. I'm thinking it's going to be a 3.5 4 star rating. Hopefully it's a 4 star, but we have that. Okay, so now moving on to the physical books that I have. Um, I have Real Pigeons Fight Crime by Andrew McDonald and Ben Wood. This is an art copy. Um, this is literally just a cute little fun, almost kind of like a comic read on pigeons. Um, I don't know. It, there are other books. Is, uh, pigeons, Real Pigeons Eat Danger and Real Pigeons Nest Hard. Um, so I'm going to be reading this with my son. It looks like it's going to be just a funny read, um, pretty much. Love the graphics in here. So, um, I'm hoping to just read this in one sitting. Um, but yeah, this is the first book in the Real Pigeons series, and it literally just looks funny to me. So, yeah, this book's come, it comes out on January 7th, so I probably should read this after I make this video. So, we probably gonna read this ASAP, but we have this. It looks like it's gonna be fun. I don't know if this is, like, middle grade or children's or whatever. Probably a middle grade read, um, but again, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a middle grade read. It definitely is. It says a fast-paced new human series with art on every page, just right for the fans of Bad Guys and Dogman. My son loves Dogman, so this is definitely going to be fun for us to read. It says, what do real pigeons do? They fight crime, of course. Wait, what? You didn't know your town is protected by a secret squad of crime-fighting feathered friends. Well, you are about to get schooled. Real pigeons solve mysteries. Real pigeons battle bad guys. And real pigeons won't stop until the breadcrumbs are safe for pecking. So we have this as just a fun, cute read. I'll probably definitely read this right after this video because it sounds like it's really fun and cute. So we have that. Next, I have two Christian books. So this one is going to be Christian Contemporary. It's The Way of Brave by Susan May Warner. Su Susan May Warren, excuse me. Um, not gonna lie, I don't know much about this at all. I know it deals with the mountains and that's it. Yeah, so I'm going to read the back of it. Um, so it says, Haunted by the memory of a rescue gone wrong, former para-rescue jumper Orion Starr has no desire to join Hamilton Jones' elite rescue team. But he also can't shriek his duty when the call comes in to rescue three lost climbers on Denali in Alaska. 
Jenny Calhoun's yearly extreme challenge with her best friends is her only escape from her guilt. The former CIA profiler and psychiatrist greenlighted an operation against the Taliban that ended in ambush and lives lost. When her cathartic climb on the Denali turns deadly, she'll be forced to trust her life to the most dangerous of heroes, the man she nearly killed. Orion and Jenny will have to put their wounds behind them to save their friends and their hearts. So we have this it sounds like it's going to be interesting this is the first book in the global search and rescue series so um we have that um don't really have many high hopes hopefully a three star for this book but this is a review book that i have to read the next book is going to be christian romantic suspense this is by nalette isan this is collateral damage it's the first book in the danger never sleeps trilogy this is what the cover looks like it's really plain but i love the cover that like the colors back here but it says they thought they left the fight behind on the battlefield but their greatest struggles are just beginning honorably discharged from the army after an explosion nearly killed her Former military psychiatrist Brooke Adams has set up shop to help others, but her days of helping military personnel are over. She's got her own battles to fight from her time overseas, and she's not equipped to take them on. Former Army Special Ops Sergeant First Class Asher James us so much, oh my god, could handle anything that war sent his way. The only thing that scares him now is sleep. As the shadows close in, the nightmares begin. Finally convinced that he needs help, Asher makes an appointment with the counselor. When he arrives at her office, she isn't there, but a dead body is. When it becomes clear that Brooke was the real target of the attack and that her secrets go even deeper than his own, Asher vows to protect her no matter what. Ooh, so that sounds like it's going to be really like gritty, dark, fun, kind of romancy type of story. So I'm excited to dive into this. I'm hoping this is a four star though. We'll see. The next book I have is going to be The Will in the Wilds by, Char by Charlie in Holmberg and this is the author of the paper magicians which I haven't read but I really do want to read but um here is that so this paper is in here because I did get it from the publishing company I also have an art copy that they sent but they sent this as a thank you um this book does come out on January 21st 2020 so definitely got to read it um but I don't remember I know that this has magic and fantasy aspects that's all that I remember so I'm gonna read it back to you guys um it says never trust a misting Anna knows to fear the mistings that roam the wildwood near her home when one tries to kill her to obtain an ancient stone anna takes a huge risk fighting back with a misting of her own michaelis i think that's how you say that michaelis help michaelis's help isn't free his price a kiss one with power to steal her soul but their deal leaves michaelis bound to the mortal realm which begins eating him alive Ooh. Only Anna's kiss giving willingly can save him from immediate destruction. It's a temporary salvation for Michaelis and a lingering doom for Anna. Part of her soul now burns bright inside Michaelis, making him feel for the first time. Anna shares Michaelis' suffering, but her small sacrifice won't last long. If she and Michaelis can't break the spell binding him to the mortal realm, Michaelis will be consumed completely and in a soul with him. That sounds epic. So, yeah, I'm excited to dive into this. It looks like it's going to be really, really fun to read. It's less than 250 pages, so, yeah. Ooh, they have little, like, notes in the back, music notes in the back, so that's epic. Okay, so I'm excited. Um, But, yeah, I have to read this paperwork. I haven't read it yet, but we have this as another read. Okay, and the last four books are going to be Christian fiction books, of course, because I like to read. And I don't normally include my Christian reads on this channel. I normally keep them to my other channel, which is Daughter of Increase. But this is a book channel. These are books, so I'm going to share them with you guys. So the next one is going to be Iscariot by Tosca Lee. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of Tosca Lee. I've heard of Tosca Lee. She writes a lot of, I think, thriller suspense novels as well as some fantasy with Ted Decker. But this one is more biblical fiction, and it just talks about or gives a sort of story to Judas Iscariot, who was the portrayer of Jesus I'm super, super excited to dive into this. I'm hoping this is a five star, but if not a four star, I'll settle with. But we have this. Then we have this one, which is actually going to be a buddy read with one of my sisters. And this is Mind Games by Nancy Mahel. This is the first book in the Kaylee Quinn Profiler series. And this one deals with a BAU, Behavioral Analysis, um, right? Yeah, Behavioral Analysis from the FBI named Kaylee Quinn, excuse me. Um, and or Kylie Quinn I only say Kaylee but Kylie Quinn um, and she is the daughter of a very famous serial killer and now there are letters from another serial killer that string to her but they're written in poem form and it has to do with murders um, and it also deals with a what's his name a special agent named Noah Hunter so serial killers romance I'm here for it sounds like it's gonna be good Hoping this is at least a four star because I do have the sequel and I'm ho I'm planning on getting the third book when it comes out this year. So, 
yeah. Next we have a sort of sci-fi dystopian and that's going to be Travis Thrasher's American Omens. This is an art copy. This book came out, oh my god, last year, February 12th, um, February 12th, 2019. So... Yeah, I still have an arc. I still have not read this. I have started this book so many times and haven't completed it. Um, I was enjoying it as well. So I'm excited to dive into this. This is futuristic. It is set in the year of 2038. And it deals with a young woman named Cheyenne. Um, I can't remember what she is. She's a young programmer working for a top technology firm called Akatar. Her father declares that he is going to be a Christian and then he just goes disappearing. Um, so she joins a band of other people with this sort of prophet name. What is his name? The Reckoner. The prophet's name is The Reckoner. And it's basically them trying to expose the darkness behind um, what's been going on with those who have been declaring themselves to be new converts to Christianity. So it sounds epic. I'm a Christian. I'm excited, interested to dive into this, and I'm getting into Christian thriller and suspense novels a lot more, um, even though suspense and thriller is still a genre that I'm not comfortable with, but for some reason with the Christian subgenre, it's cool for me, so we have that. The last book on this TV, y'all. The last one. It's not really the last one, because I still have, like, six other books I'm reading, but we not gonna include those, because they're, like, non-fiction books. Moving on, um, it's Left Behind by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. This is a book that many people have raved about to me. Minty people have raved about to me. And I want to read this book. Um, I own the first 12 books. There are 13 books total in the Left Behind series. I own the first 12. And then I own the first two of three in the prequel series. So I'm excited to be diving into this, see how I feel. This is almost a tome. It's close to 500 pages. So we going to see. Um, I'm most likely going to listen to the audiobook for this as I read, just because this, I, I have too many books. But um, we have this, and it deals with the rapture, basically. So the rapture takes place, and some people are left behind, and they have to figure out how to survive the final days that are getting ready to happen. So we have that. Okay, guys, so that's 16 books. Not, like I said, including the other books that I'm going to be reading that are Christian nonfiction books, but that's a lot. Actually, no, 16 plus the other three that I didn't mention. So that's 19, excuse me, because I forgot the ebooks that I have. So 19 books total. Um, can I do it? Of course, I read anywhere between 15 to about 22 books in a month, depending. Um, so the first book I'm going to tackle will definitely be Real Pigeons Fight Crime um, because it looks like it's going to be a cute, fun read. My son isn't home, and I would definitely love to read this with him, but I'm probably just going to read it myself. Um, it's about 200 pages. Yeah, about 200 pages, but because it's big words and mostly just graphics, um, it's going to be a quick read. And I just, I really think this is so cute. Like, I really want to get the other two books, too, as well, because they look like it's going to be fun. They remind me of the characters from Angry Bird. That's what it is. So, this is definitely going to be my first pick. And then I'm probably going to pick up the Wicked King, not the Wicked King, the Queen of Nothing, because... We need to know because I still it still guts me every time I read The Wicked King and find out that Jude is banished. So I've been hearing people like some people love the um, Queen of Nothing. And actually, let me grab the book. So many people love the Queen of Nothing and some people don't because they feel like it should have been longer. I'm OK as long as Jude and Cardin get their happy ending. That That's it. I don't care. As long as they get their happy ending. I know they do the do. So that's that's all that matters to me because I want them to to be together. So these two will definitely be my first to read so that's that but that is it for this video you guys thank you guys for watching reading commenting subscribing and all that great stuff if you are not subscribed definitely subscribe and if you are subscribed click the bell to stay notified and i'll see you guys in the next video bye